the 2001 Alumnus of the Year. He was the American Council on Exercise Fitness Educator of the Year in 2005 and Guinness World Record Holder in 2009. Dr. Seaburn was selected into the Taekwondo Hall of Fame in 2013 and was the Piper Award recipient in 2014. The Piper Award is the highest teaching honor that any college or university professor in Texas can receive in their career. He has authored over 200 articles in referee journals and 16 published books, including five from the best-selling The Complete Idiot Guide series. Dr. Seaburn's blogs and videos are available on the NPCC website. He was a two-time All-American athlete and member of the U.S. Taekwondo team and international Taekwondo champion. In cycling, Dr. Seaburn was the winner of the Race Across America Open West and finished in the top 10 of the entire Race Across America. He was also the national 12 and 24 hour unpaced record holder, cycling 229 miles and 458 miles respectively. Dr. Seaburn has been featured in Sports Illustrated Magazine three times and ultimately was named their athlete of the month. Dr. Seaburn, we're honored to have you as our commencement speaker today. Thanks, Dr. Johnson, and always with an introduction like that, uh, you never hear about the failures, so I'll tell you a couple failures. Uh, when I was a teenager, I wanted to be a rock star, so I played guitar all the time, and uh, actually was in a rock band and played at our prom, but that's it, that's as far as I got. You know, I didn't, I didn't do any albums, no, no videos, and then I wanted to be a tennis pro, so uh, I played tennis all the time, and uh, it was high school, played high school tennis and then uh, played for Penn State. And in my senior year at Penn State, you know, we were at the end of our Southern tour where we had lost every match. And coming back in the band, and I was the only one awake, I asked my coach, I said, Coach, if I work really hard, if I keep working hard, can I be a tennis pro? Can I play the satellite circuit? And he said, no, Tom, you'll never be a tennis pro. And uh, he was right. I didn't have the talent. I didn't have the talent for either guitar or tennis. And I realized that it's, it's not just about hard work. In fact, you're not gonna see many five feet tall basketball players in the NBA. But when I, when I look at the students here, and if I were to ask them, was it just hard work that got you through Northeast? I bet they'd say no. I bet, I bet they would say that you helped them, you know, parents, uh, friends, and especially the teachers. I mean, we have the, the most nurturing and caring group of teachers of any school I've ever been associated with. And I can say that because so many of my students come back here after going to a university and they take their classes here that they can take here because of our great faculty. We have three of the faculty leaving that I, I hate to see. It's uh, if Kim Womack could stand and uh, Nel Nelda Davis and Ann Semero. These are my friends and amazing colleagues. Please give all the faculty. Well, well, maybe it wasn't the faculty that helped them so much. Maybe it wasn't the hard work. But maybe it was that these students were focused. And if you didn't know, that's our slogan here is focus. And to me, there's two types of focus. There's a, a focus that's more general. And, and that focus is like when you use your left brain and Google things. You, you could Google what type of weed killer to use because it's raining so much. You could Google what institution you're going to finish up with after you're done here at Northeast. And you all can probably Google where you're going to celebrate graduation today. But then there's a, there's a more important type of focus, in my opinion. It's the internal focus. And that's the focus where, you know, be still and know that I am God. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. This type of focus where we're really looking inside ourselves, where we get off our iPhones for a few minutes and we just close our eyes and listen to our hearts. What do we really want to do? Where do we want to be in five years? In fact, every graduate should ask that question because Every interview I've been on, I've always been asked that question. What do you want to be doing in five years? What is your passion? 
Well, I'm going to be talking about two students today who have uh, exemplarily, you know, their, their focus ability is amazing. Uh, one of them, William Campesano, was the 2014 Alumnus of the Year. And uh, he's a mixed martial artist, one of the best in the world now. He's uh, recently signed two six-figure contracts with the UFC. And uh, the other student is Linda Aguilar. She is a non-traditional student and owns her own business here in Mount Pleasant. Well, Oscar Wilde said that uh, we're all in the gutter, but some of us are looking at the stars. Well, Linda, when she came from El Salvador and was walking through the arrival gates, she knew she was gonna do something special here in the US. And when William was in my second summer karate class, I knew he was gonna be doing something special because he was beating up all my advanced students and he had never taken any type of martial arts training in his life. So, you know, being, thinking, wow, you know, what am I gonna do? And, and boy, they, they really had that passion early on. Einstein said that if what your goal is isn't a little bit absurd, it's probably not worth attempting. Well, you know, think Linda could barely speak English coming off the plane, and then within 10 years, she owns her own company. And William, five foot nine, 130 pounds, is now one of the best mixed martial artists in the world, and uh, he resides in Dallas. Steve Jobs said that if you're letting other people decide who you are, then you're not doing it right. In other words, don't let other people define you. And Linda's brother uh, from El Salvador used to call her and say, oh, so you're selling pots and pans, ha ha ha, making fun of her profession. Well, now he's trying to get to the US so he can work for his little sister here in the US. And then uh, there, William, his family's probably a little bit concerned about you know, the fact that mixed martial arts is probably the toughest sporting event in the world. And the fact that he hadn't done much training before. And also, you know, most of his competitors have been wrestling or doing martial arts since they were five years old. So, you know, doing something a little bit out there, that's, that's amazing and inspiring even to me. So Arnold Schwarzenegger said that uh, you can't walk or climb up the ladder of success with your hands in your pocket. And both Linda and Will know what it's like to work hard. When I first met Linda, uh, being a guy in the phys ed department, she said, what's the most important thing about losing weight and keeping it off? And I told her learning how to cook, and she said, oh, that, that's what I do. I, I teach cooking, teaching healthy cooking. And then selling is just a byproduct of that. In other words, for her, her passion is making people fit and healthy, and her sales is kind of like selling without selling, like Bruce Lee's fighting without fighting. And um, if you were to ever see uh, William Campuzano and Google his image, you would see he even looks like Bruce Lee. He fights like Bruce Lee and he actually trains like Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee uh, trained hours and hours a day and Will trained six hours a day. Two hours in the morning, two hours in the afternoon, two hours in the evening. So hard work is certainly a, a big part of the process. Both Linda and Will have learned to be comfortable being uncomfortable and, and I love that phrase. That's from uh, Dan Coyle's book, The Talent Code. And when you think about it, once the graduates, and I'm sure they all have this, especially most of these are nursing graduates, they've had to work really hard. Once you develop discipline and you have a passion for what you do, then you can accomplish any goal. So, uh, you know, looking at all of these students here today, since they have that discipline, maybe they're gonna change professions, but it won't matter because they have the discipline that accomplish anything. And for, for Will and Linda, achievement is fun for them. I mean, I'm sure they like to party as well, but achieving, being productive, working hard has become fun. And, uh, and that, that's exciting that we, we can change that about ourselves. And, and again, many of you here are gonna continue your education and that has to be part of it. Dyson said that most of us, just before we're about to achieve our goal, we quit. And I sure see that in the fitness industry. What I see a lot of is that people go on a good exercise and eating program, and then just before they're about to achieve success, they quit. Or more likely is what I see is that even you know, people from our campus, they'll, they'll be exercising, eating right, and then they'll miss a day, and then they decide to just quit altogether for a month. 
and they'll be busy during that month and then they have to restart starting all over again. And that's like if you get in your car and you get a flat tire, you're getting out of your car and slashing your other three tires. Because look, I mean, it's much easier to just stay on a program than it is to start and stop and then restart. So both Linda and Will in their short career, they've just been out there really for five to 10 years. They both had to reinvent themselves. And Jim Swan and I were just talking about that. We're all reinventing ourselves. Uh, Linda is building an office in the center of Mount Pleasant so that she can appeal to a whole different clientele. And William is opening up a school in Dallas so that he can teach. And uh, teaching is, is one of his talents because he helped me teach a little bit here at Northeast. And both Linda and Will are sharpening the sword. That means they're continuously improving themselves. I know some of the faculty feel the same way that we have to be learning. We have to spend about an hour a day, and many people more than that, learning something new. So we, we all can learn something new. And finally, both William and Linda have learned what's important about giving back. Uh, Linda asks God every morning, you know, what can she do to help people? And she more than ties to her local church. And William, he has a nonprofit charity, so, so he knows it's not just about success for yourself. And uh, that, that's to be admired for anybody at, at these young people's age. So putting it all together, you know, first, finding a passion, you know, finding something you love. And, and again, a lot of the certificate students uh, hopefully love what they're about to be doing. And then if you have something that you love, working really hard at it. But working hard at something you love, and you probably heard the phrase, if you love what you do, you don't work a day in your life. I, I believe that to be true. But then also work smart. And by that I mean, uh, I, I chose two wrong activities if I wanted to be successful. I, I tried to be a, a rock star in guitar, that didn't work. And I tried to be a tennis pro, I didn't have the talent. So be smart in your choices. And then finally, it's, it's progress, not perfection. So uh, a, a lot of people, when they attempt something, they keep thinking, you know, I've, I've got to do it fast, I've got to do it now, especially this generation, you know, kind of the entitlement generation. We, I, I've got to just be given it, but no, it, it's going to be a lot of adversity over the long haul. So I, I think it's such a privilege here to work at Northeast Texas Community College and I just want to remind everybody, if you get the opportunity, I hopefully that you've already had the opportunity, uh, those of you who haven't voted yet, please vote. And thank you so much for your time.